The Canon T7 is the world's best-selling camera, but it's also one of the most affordable. But there's more to the Canon T7 than just the price, because what's inside this little beast is the impressive part. So what exactly makes the Canon T7 so special? And how does it compare in terms of quality to more expensive cameras? And the Canon T7 isn't right for everyone for several reasons. Let's take a look at some very specific features to see if the Canon T7 is the right fit for you. All right, here's the truth. The Canon T7 is more than five years old, but it's still one of the most affordable and one of the best cameras that you can get at this price point. And if you do want the best pricing on your Canon T7, make sure to check out the links in the description down below. They made the Canon T7 for a very specific type of user and they put only the features that that specific type of user would need and cut out all of the fluff, making this camera affordable and streamlined. So let's start on the outside of the Canon T7. The Canon T7 is kind of a weird camera when you first pick it up. And it's simply not what most people would expect. The Canon T7 looks like and is shaped like an old school DSLR, but it's actually much smaller and closer to the size of a compact camera. It has the feel of a DSLR in your hands and it still has a nice deep grip for handling and it's comfortable for shooting for several hours of the day. Although it doesn't have the exact same weight and heft in your hands, but that actually makes the Canon T7 better as a travel camera or a daily carry camera that you can always keep on you. And it also has Wi-Fi to transfer photos and videos straight to your phone so you can do everything with this camera just on the go. The button layout and menu system on this camera is really simple and straightforward, although if you do get lost, there's also a mode dial at the top that has different shooting modes like night mode, portrait, food, sports, landscapes, pretty much any kind of photography that you could possibly do. And it takes all of the technical hassle using this camera just out of your hands. It's really simple to just pick up the T7 and get great results. But the visuals of the menu and the user interface are kind of dated. They 100% work, but sometimes this camera kind of reminds me of like a Super Nintendo. It feels old, which is kind of a weird way of saying the T7 actually feels vintage, but that doesn't mean it's bad in any way whatsoever. Because what makes the Canon T7 unique is the fact that inside of this camera, there's some really powerful technology that is still relevant even today. The most important thing when it comes to visual quality in your camera is your sensor. More specifically, the resolution of your sensor and also how your camera processes whatever your sensor records. The Canon T7 has a 24 megapixel sensor. This is almost the same sensor that's also used in Canon M50, Canon 80D, and the brand new Canon R10. And those cameras are much more expensive and are also really popular cameras. So you get very similar image quality straight out of camera compared to much more expensive cameras. And the processing in the Canon T7 is actually pretty close to that of a pro level camera. When it comes to editing the photos in the Canon T7, that's where things get really crazy because the Canon T7 has 14-bit RAW, which is the same file type that you normally find in $1,000, $1,500, or $2,000 professional cameras. And thanks to that 14-bit RAW file type, there's a ton of room to push and pull your colors, but there's also a ton of light information. You can absolutely take the photos from the Canon T7 and deliver absolute bangers. But if you don't like to edit your photos, there's also a black and white and toy camera effect right in camera that gives your photos a really unique look with no work on your part. As for shooting the photos, the Canon T7 shoots at three frames per second with very fast and reliable autofocus. Now three frames per second is perfectly fine for landscapes, sit down portraits, tabletop photography, or even travel photos if you're just casually shooting as you travel through a city. But you will struggle if you're shooting sports or wildlife because three frames per second is definitely not fast enough to capture fast moving action, but the autofocus will keep up. The place the Canon T7 really shines is studio photography. Three frames per second is more than enough for photos and with some good lights and this powerful 24 megapixel sensor, you're going to get really, really good results. The only thing you have to watch out for is that the Canon T7 looks best at 400 and 800 ISO and shooting at really high ISO like 1600 or 3200 is going to give you quite a lot of grain. There's one thing that really, really holds the Canon T7 back and that's the Canon T7's lens. 
The kit lens that it comes with is decent enough if you're a beginner or a newbie, you're not really going to notice it. But if you're someone that really understands photography, the lens that it comes with is plastic, it's not even glass, and honestly, it's just not that sharp. It's perfectly fine for casual users. However, if you really wanna get the best results from your Canon T7, I recommend ditching the kit lens and buying more affordable prime lenses also from Canon. Now, Canon makes a really affordable $99 50mm f1.8 and a really affordable $120 24mm prime. However, because the Canon T7 has an EF lens mount, you also have access to really affordable vintage lenses and third-party lenses. I recommend the Sigma 18 to 35. I'm personally using it right now on this video and I'm shooting this video on a $40,000 RED camera. Lately, it seems like everyone is shooting a ton of video and the Canon T7 is good for video, but for one really specific type of user. And I will have recommendations for other video cameras later in this video. The Canon T7 shoots full HD video at 24 and 30 frames per second. Sadly, there's no 4K. And for slow motion, it does shoot 60 frames per second for two times slow motion, but it does that in 720p resolution, which is half the resolution of full HD. By today's standard, that's not really gonna cut it. But the issue with video recording is really because during video recording, there's no autofocus. So you have to first set your autofocus and then start recording, which makes the whole process of shooting video with this camera really slow. And by today's standard, this probably isn't going to meet the needs of most video shooters. But if you're like me and you wanna just whip out this camera, take a quick photo, take a quick video, quick video here and edit it together for something later, this camera will be just fine. It's great for capturing just quick moments throughout your day or while you're traveling. So is the Canon T7 actually worth it? And who is this camera really for? But more importantly, is there anything better than the Canon T7 on the market today that comes close to the technology, the specs and the price? Well, we have a few options. The main thing we have to look for is price, sensor, photo and video frame rates, but also autofocus. And the closest thing to the Canon T7 in terms of price is the Sony ZV-1F, which at the moment is about $100 more than the Canon T7, but it's a compact camera, which is similar to like a point and shoot. It has a smaller 20 megapixel sensor with a fixed 20 millimeter lens. So you cannot change lenses on it. And it does not have raw photos, but the video is pretty great. If you want a casual camera that you can just keep in your pocket, whip out, take some quick photos and videos, maybe do a little bit of social media, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, the ZV-1F is actually a pretty decent camera. But if you're someone that wants a serious camera, you really wanna get high quality photos like the T7, the ZV-1F is not going to cut it. The Canon T7 will without a doubt look better. Now, if we move up slightly in price, the main competition to the Canon T7 is the Nikon D3500. It has a very similar 24 megapixel sensor, but that camera only does 12-bit RAW, while the Canon T7 does 14-bit RAW. And I promise you, it does make a huge difference. However, the D35 shoots faster at five frames per second in photo mode, and it does full HD up to 60 frames per second in video mode, and you can also use autofocus while recording video. The Nikon D3500 makes sense if you wanna shoot both photos and videos, but not if you just wanna shoot photos. The Canon T7 is a better deal. I have to say, for the exact same price of the Nikon D3500, you can also pick up the Canon M50 and the Canon R50, would shoot at a much faster 10 frames and 12 frames per second, which is more than double the speed. But it only makes sense to pay more for those cameras if you're gonna be shooting a lot of sports and action. Otherwise, you really don't need to spend that money because they also have the exact same 24 megapixel sensor and the image quality, for photos at least, will be very similar, but the video quality will undoubtedly be far, far better. And the autofocus will also be better because they're newer cameras. All right, so I think we figured out why the Canon T7 is the world's best-selling camera, because at this price point, it delivers 14-bit raw photos, which allow you to get professional-level results, and it has a very powerful 24-megapixel sensor, and it strips away all of the fluff to keep the cost of this camera down, giving you a very pure photo experience, and it still has a little bit of video sprinkled throughout just in case you wanna take a quick video clip here and there. 
But most importantly, it has a Canon EF lens, which allows you to upgrade this camera with better lenses and you get access to more affordable third-party lenses and vintage lenses as well. So the Canon T7 ends up being a great fit for someone who wants to start doing photos casually or seriously, but they want a budget option. And if you do want the best pricing on your Canon T7, make sure to check out the links in the description down below. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.